Hi everyone. Uh, this is the lecture, video lecture of section 6.2, part 2. Okay, uh, let me check the video. Uh, it's recording, yes. So, the first part, we derived the theorem 1. Uh, before we talk about the theorem 1 again, so this is the given equation. A n, n for the derivative of y plus a n minus n, n minus first derivative y all the way to a1 dy plus a0 equals 0. So we are here, we're trying to find n linearly independent solutions for this homogeneous linear differential equation with constant coefficients. We want to replicate the success we had in chapter 4. That was trying to find a solution in this form, e to the rt. Okay? Now, in order to deal with this thing, <coughs> general say, for any degree of n, any order of n, we developed this notation. So, <coughs> let's say the pr is so called characteristic polynomial. See? Using the same coefficients, and n for the derivative becomes nth power of r, all right? So then your linear operator L is nothing but P of D. Instead of R, you have a differential operator D, differential D. And if you plug in E to the RT for Y in this equation, indeed you're going to get characterized polynomial times E to the RT, just like in chapter 4, second order differential equation case. So, E to the RT is a solution, means P of R is a solution. And in the end, the whole part one of section 6.3, uh, 6.2 is about what happens if this one has linear factors. Okay? If they have a N distinct linear factors, then it's going to have what? Linear independent solution. All right? So then this is the grand conclusion. Distinct root. So if this one, equation number three, three has n distinct, distinct complex roots. So it could be real or it could be many. Right? So n distinct complex roots. R1, R2, then then E to the R I T will be a solution, and the the bulk of work of last time was to show that these are linearly independent. All right. Uh, by developing uh, linear op differential operator L K, which is from the factor form of L, we drop the K factor. All right. We use that uh, <coughs> linear operator, differential operator, to prove this one. These are all linear independent. So, from the general theorem six point one. Once you have a n linearly independent solutions, linear combination of them will be general solution. It covers everything. All right. And then, just like the section uh, chapter four, if one of R J, R R I R J, so remark the remark is that if R i is alpha i plus i beta. This i is a kind of confusing. That's why I think last time I chose j k, right? j k Okay. R 
complex conjugate roots, right? So we know that when you have a real coefficient polynomial equation, you, yes, you still could have uh, non-imaginary roots, but those imaginary roots must be coming in complex conjugate pair. So one is plus, one is minus, right? Then, then you can write C, J, E, T, R, J, T, C, K, E, T, R, K, T can be written as by using C, J, C, I, R complex conjugate, you can actually get you know, some linear combination of Let's say alpha j, just alpha beta. Alpha t, okay? So these can be replaced with this, okay? This is the same thing that we did in chapter four. So let's do an example one. So find a general solution for y triple prime. Y triple prime. Okay. Then the <coughs> auxiliary equation is r to the third plus r squared plus 3r minus 5 equals 0. Now, how do you factor this? That's the pre-calculus one question, right? You have to use P's and Q's method. First of all, you have to find a root, which is factor of this. So you have to start from plus minus one or plus minus five. Now, if you plug in one, oh yeah, one equals one give you zero. That means r minus 1 is a factor. So how do we find r minus 1, the other factor? Well, we have to use uh, synthetic division. 1, 1. You know how to do, how to use synthetic division. r minus 1, then you have to do 1. 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, 0 as we expect. Okay, and then <coughs> r squared plus 2r plus 5 equals 0 means what? Actually, I can write this one as r squared plus 2r plus 1 plus 4. So this is r plus 1 complete square, negative 4, plus minus 2r. So r equals negative 1 plus minus 2i, okay? Now you can use just quadratic formula. You can get this one right away. And you have already 1, all right? You can say that r1 equals 1, r2 equals minus 1 plus 2i, r3 equals minus 1 minus 2i. Three distinct roots for should be a question. You have them. You could use this way, but when you have imaginary roots, it's better to write it as e t r one t, which means just t c one e to the minus. This is your alpha. This is your beta. Alpha t minus t cosine of two t e to the alpha t, which is minus t. Sine beta. T. Okay? So this would be your general solution. Okay? <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, example 1B. What is it? Six triple client sense. Y, X double prime. So in that case, again, characteristic equation is 6R cubed plus 7R squared minus R2 equals 0. Again, we have to use P's and Q's. In that case, when you have non-unit leading coefficient, your root, if you have a rational zero, it will be rational roots, it will be of this form. Factor of the constant over factor of leading coefficient. So plus minus one, two, three, or six. So that means the possibility is that using 1 plus minus 1 plus minus 2, using this plus minus 1 half, this one plus minus 1 back to this. And then plus minus 1 third plus minus 2 thirds plus minus 1 over 6 plus minus 2 over 6 is 1 third. This is the complete list of the solutions. Possible solutions. But in, even in this case, we'll start with simple ones, one by one. And in that case, <coughs> actually, one does not work. But when you're plugging r equals one, what do you get? It's r equals negative one. Negative six plus seven plus one. Hey, it is zero. All right? So we can do 6, 7, minus 1, minus 2, negative 1, copy down, multiply, adding up, multiply, adding up, multiply. So r plus 1, minus 2. And this one can be further factored if you do. Let's say 2, 4, no, 2, 3, minus 1. Cross product is negative 3 and 4. Add up to be 1. Matches. That means r plus 1, 2 r minus 1, 0. So r should be either negative 1, 1 half, negative 2 thirds. That's why your general solution will be C1 times E to the negative 1 times T, C2 E to the 1 half of T, minus 2 thirds of T. Okay? <coughs> so, when you have, uh, when you have distinct roots, that's easy. If all of them are real, just write it this way. If some of them are imaginary, then you find just complex conjugate pairs. And those two complex conjugate pairs term will be replaced with this. E to the alpha t cosine beta t to the alpha sine beta t. That's all. Then you can set up some general solution. Now, the harder one is repeating. If R1 is a root <coughs> of multiplicity M of the auxiliary equation 3, then not only ET1, RT,
linearly independent solutions of number one. This is number one. So, this is a very natural generalization of what we already learned. When you have characteristic equation was this. So that means r minus 2 squared equals 0. So r equals double root, right? Now in order to get general solution, we need to have a 2 linearly independent solution for secondary equation. But you have only 1, right? You cannot write this way. It's going to be just one constant, c1 plus c2 is t, 2t. Okay? At the time, what we found was that in that case, not only e to the 2t, but t times e to the 2t were solutions. And they're linearly independent. So you just combine it this way. Right? So when you have a double root, not only e to the 2t, but t times e to the 2t. So two of them. So you can generate the same number of linear independent uh, solution. Likewise, if you have a multiple with say three, then e to the r on t, t times e to the r on t, t squared times e to the r on t. So you have three linear independent solutions easily from <coughs> that triple root. If you have five, then you will have one, two, three. And t to the third e to the t and t to the fourth e to the r t. Again, five linear independent solution. If you have a multiplicity m, all the way up to t to the m minus one. So t to the zero. So totally m linear independent solution. So if you have a distinct solution, you have same number of solutions. If you have triple solution, out of this you can generate these two. Three linear independent solution. You have a, <coughs> a root of multiplicity five. Out of that, you can write five of them. So, in the end, if you have a n number of solutions, you must have a n solutions from fundamental theorem of relativity. Right? No matter what the composition is, are they all distinct or some of them repeated? Doesn't matter. You will eventually end up getting n linear independent solutions through theorem 1 or 2. Okay? So you can always get general solution of homogeneous linear differential equation with constant equation. As long as you get solution of characteristic equation. Okay? <clears throat> now, how do we prove this? First of all, you have to <coughs> Realize that R1 is a root of multiplicity. M means that you, your P of R has this. This M shows up here. Okay? M has, when you divide by this one, you get some polynomial. But where Q of R is n minus n polynomial, but Q of R1 is no longer. Okay? <coughs> so R1 is a root of multiplicity and means Q of R is of this one. Okay? Now, knowing this, L of e to the r t, we know that this is t of r e to the r t, right? So, using this, this is r minus r1 to the nth power q of r times e to the r t. Okay? Now, this one. You see R and T shows up. You can consider this is a function of 
R and T, two variable functions. Okay. <coughs> and from there, now let's take take case order partial derivative. Case or their partial derivative with respect to R of both sides. Of equals Okay. Now <clears throat> I'm gonna call it star. So this must be true for all R and T. Alright? All R T. This is star. <clears throat> now let's take a look at left hand side. Left hand side is what well, all is ETR L of ETR T. It was A N. It was a T derivative. Now, because we also want to consider R as a variable, not only T is a variable, R is a variable, then we have to write this one as round round the T. Right? T partial derivative. So this is T partial derivative of and t partial derivative of e to the rt and minus a1 okay now because this partial derivative is also our linear we can split over addition and then constant can be taken out A minus one. And then A one. Of Okay. Art. So we are trying to rewrite left hand side of the equation star here. Now, e to the rt is very nice function, continuous and differentiable with respect to r and t infinite many times. In that case, using Clairaut's law in calculus that you learn, you can change the order. You can take any partial derivative in any order, as long as this is continuous or differentiable number of times necessary. In this case, infinite many times. So, you can write this one as n. So, we are changing the order of this. Right? So this is the same thing. Now, what is it? There is just L of 
eat the art, isn't it? When you take this one during the K times with respect to R, each time T comes up. This is actually L of T to the K power E to the R T, isn't it? Right? <coughs> See what I mean? Round, rounder, E to the R T. Now R is the variable, T is just a constant. E to the R T times derivative inside, which is T. All right? Second order derivative with respect to R. This is R derivative of this one. Again, T just like a constant. So, this derivative with respect to R, T comes out again. All right? So if you do K times, you get T to the K. All right? All right, that was the left-hand side of this equation. What about right-hand side? If your k is 1 through n minus 1, then <coughs> the right hand side the right hand side Think about it. If you have a r minus r1, let's say n equals 5 case, if you take first order derivative, what do you get? You have to use product. 5 r minus r1 to the fourth. qr. Now you keep this one. q prime of r. And this one, so t times qr, t times e to the rt from r derivative. So in the end, you can write it as. You can factor out r minus r1 to the fourth, 5qr e to the rt. r minus r1, q prime of r e to the rt. t times r minus r to the five, qr e to the rt. Right? Okay, so you still have fourth order. So if you have a second order derivative of r of r minus r one five, that is first order derivative of this one, right? And I'm going to call it q one of r t. Some expression of R and T, right? Then you get 4 R minus R1 to the third power and, and Q of R, Q1 of RT. And then now product of Q. Okay, so in the end, I can factor out r minus r1 to the third power, and then we remain. So, when you take first derivative, you still have the result as this quick uh, factor. Twice differentiate, at least 5 minus 2, still, third power is remaining. So if you have a, another partial derivative with respect to r of this, then you'll have still at least 
second power is remaining for y. So if k is less than m, then if you keep differentiating with respect to r k times, each time you are reducing one vector, so in the end, m minus k. And then some expression about r and t. All right? So that's your right hand side. <clears throat> okay? Now, plug it in r equals r1 there. Now, that expression, right hand side. Now, in that expression, I'm going to plug it in r equals r1. Now, what do you get? r1 minus r1 to the m minus k. Now, whatever that is, I'm going to call it so, Qk of r and t. Some expression about r and t. r1 and t. I don't care what that is. This one is zero, right? r1 is <clears throat> what about left hand side? Two R equals R one. Look at this. That is R equals R one, right? That is just t to the k power r1t, right? So, these two are equal. This is equal to this, right? So basically, when I plug in r equals r1 here, r equals r1 there, you get this one, t to the k, e to the r1t, equals right hand side, zero. For all m greater than or equal to 1 and m minus 1 k. Okay? So what does it mean? t to k is the r1 t is a solution to number 1. For all k up to m minus 1. Up to from here to We already know that this is a solution. Even for this. Also, solution. Okay? This is a very clever argument, right? Instead of trying to plug in everything and then that would be almost impossible. Alright? Now, linear independence, I'm going to skip. Uh, it's tedious ones. So, the, the most important argument is this. <clears throat> Alright? So, so just like a uh, uh, distinct root case, if some of them, let's say, if some of them are repeated, you see, if some of them is repeated, so if you have a alpha plus beta i is a root, some of the, let's say r i, r1 is image root of multiplicity, and then this complex conjugate is also root of multiplicity of m. So not only this one, t times this, t squared times this, all the way to the n minus 1. Not only that, alpha minus beta, t times 
all the way to two. Okay. So by combining this, you're going to get e to the alpha t cosine beta t, e to the alpha t sine beta t comes out from here. t times e to the alpha t cosine beta t. t times e to the alpha t sine beta t. Our solution. All the way to t to the m minus 1. So you can replace this pair with this pair, this pair with this pair, all the way to this. So m multiplies in totally 2m distinct solutions, 2m, not distinct solutions, 2m solutions up to multiple city. <coughs> 2m, we have 2m linearly independent solutions in real variables. Okay? So in example two. Find the general solution when you have, okay, I just gave you basically all factored form, right? So your root of the characteristic equation is triple root here and single root here, all right? And according to theorem one and two, then your general solution will be c1 e to the negative 2. c2 t times e to the negative 2 t. c3 times t squared e to the negative 2 t. And this one. <coughs> All right. A lot of times we write it c1 plus c2 t c3 t squared. Okay. All right. Well, actually, I wrote this one two, three, four, and this is one. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> what about B? Your B is what? D plus one square and D squared minus 4D plus 5 to the third power. This one to the third power. So your characteristic polynomial will be R plus 1 squared minus 4 4d plus 5 to the third. Now, when you try to solve this one, first of all, r equals negative 1 and negative 1. Okay? Now, r squared minus 4r r plus 5. This is r minus 2 squared plus 1 equals 0. Isn't it? r squared minus 4r plus 4 plus 1. So, plus minus i, so r equals 2 plus minus i. But then you have cubic. So you have 2 plus minus 2i, two, 2 plus minus i, 3 times. So you have 6 solutions and 8, see? 6 and 8 degree. So in that case, C1 e to the minus 1 t, t times e to the minus t, right? From here, you have, you can write it this way, see? e to the 2 t cosine 1 t plus c6, c7, t, c8 t squared to t sine t. All right, that would be the best compact form. All right, out of these three multiplicity of pairs, you have pairs of three. All right. Finally, example three. 
solving this linear uh, solving this initial value problem. You know, in example 1a, we already got that this one has to be c1 e to the t e to the negative t cosine of 2t. Okay? Now, you have to take derivative and up to second derivative. So, this is the same as this. You know, if you do use, if you use product rule, and you can go through the lecture, and this is tedious stuff, in the end, you can uh, arrange this way. So plus minus C2 minus T cosine of 2T minus 2C2 minus C3 sine of 2T and then you can do a second derivative here also use product rule and arrange things together then you get C1 to the T this one will be minus 3C2 and 4C2 You want to arrange it this way, okay? So let me check. Okay? And then by plugging in y of 0 equals 2, you get c1, and 0 means this is 0, plus c2 equals 2. y prime of 0 equals negative 2, you get c1, now this is 0, minus c2 plus 2c3 equals negative 2. y double prime 0 equals 2, 0, and this one is 0, so 1. c1 minus 3c2. Okay? So this is just a system of linear equation of 3 there, and you can solve it. Alright? Then you can get C1 equals 1, C2 equals 2, C3 equals minus 1. Therefore, the solution will be 1, 2, and minus 1. Okay? <coughs> All right. That's the end of section 6.2. So, uh, not only today, but also today is Monday, March 29th. This coming Thursday, also we will have the office hour, as usual. From uh, I'm going to have office hour 10 to 11 a.m. every Monday and Thursday. So, second half is the same as your class hour. So you should be available at certain part of the office hour. Okay? So uh, I already sent you an email invitation of Zoom meeting of office hours of this course every Monday and Thursday from now on from 10 to 11 a.m. All right? So just come to the meeting if you have any questions, either from the problems or or even from the lecture, all right? So again, so you're supposed to study, finish studying section 6.2 in the first half of this, uh, this week. So Thursday, you can bring questions, anything up to section 6.2, all right? All right, this is it for today, and I'll see you next time. Bye.